Don't panic. This is the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. The game box. This game came out in 1984. This is the Commodore 64 version. And I still have all the things that came with it. It came with a lot of really cool things. And I thought it would be fun to show all the stuff that this came with. There's the Cosmic Cutie, which is in, created by the American publishers of the novels from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Um, it had nothing to do with Douglas Adams whatsoever. Now, for those of you who are younger gamers may not really understand uh, how the, a game like this worked. There were no graphics in an Infocom game. It was all text-based. Uh, you would simply write what you wanted to do, and it would and it would uh, do it for you. In fact, uh, there's an example here of how a game like this works. Yeah. You know, like, get out of the taxi. That's for what sort of tap. And then you basically, what you see here is what what you would enter. Get out of the taxi, and then the game would say this, and then you would just say what you want to do. Give five pound note to the driver, and so forth. Uh, a very funny story here, so let's read it. That's five pounds to you, old chap. Give five pound note to the driver. Thanks, chum. Unlock the door. Taxi door is now unlocked. Get out of the taxi. Street corner. You are on a street corner on the outskirts of London. A signpost reveals that you are on the corner of Foomington and Frobington. The sidewalk continues north and east. Because of the heavy traffic here, crossing the street is out of the question. Who am I? If I can get that on camera. You are Chester Smith, an unemployed granola salesman. What is the object of the game? Well, the superficial object of the game is to get to the end of the story and achieve the maximum score. The real object of the game is to show a bunch of novices how interactive fiction works. Walk north, outside Blood Bank. You're in the middle of a block of the street that runs north-south. Immediately to the east is entrance to a massive granite footnote 9 building next to the end of sign, sign of normal footnote 9, etc., etc. And so the entire game operates in that way. But if you're a fan of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, you know, the inside here is hilarious. And probably not something that... Uh, you know too much about the the reviews are all fake here so it's like take their words for it for the re reviews of the game this software is revolutionary i like that fidel castro former baseball player havana cuba <laughs> stunning achievement in interactive fiction funny innovative and a bargain at twice the price the new zork time zork was infocom's uh, most famous game their first game kind of defined the genre of interactive fiction Everything I've heard is true. Your games are boring, overpriced, and a waste of time. The only thing stupider than this game is my brother Ralph. Bunk Binky O'Leary, construction, construction worker, Brooklyn, New York. Infocom products are dot 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 a piece of ad greatness, not merely a game. <laughs> I would buy any new Infocom, the National Gazette. Best game I've ever played. But what's the square black flat thing with the hole in the middle? I.e. the floppy disk. Ralph O'Leary, gym teacher, Brooklyn, New York. Help several staffers predict the future, get dates with Paul Newman, and lose 300 pounds in less than four days, a National Inquisitor. <laughs> the disc makes great teething ring and fits perfectly on the bottom of a birdcage. Liz Taylor, Highway Patrolman, <laughs> the Skyway, New Jersey. Hitchhikers is the greatest work of fiction I've ever played. The description were especially delicious. Restaurant guide. I never played it and I hate all computer products. I don't understand why you're quoting me. Ralph Burfel, fireman, Columbus, Ohio. I especially like it when it gets colorful. On Sundays, I think. Oh, aren't we talking about comic strips? Name withheld by request. Washington, D.C. <laughs> I could work with today's president, actually. Uh, never mind the 80s. Alright, so fans with Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy will love all this, all this stuff here. As seen on Tri-D, how many times has this happened to you? Now, see the universe, the, the safe and money-saving way with the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy from Mega Dodo Productions. They even have a logo. Yeah. Productions. Computer games just don't have stuff like this anymore. Yes, the universe can be yours for less than 30 Altarian dollars per day. Black holes, savage alien warrior tribes, welfare planets ruled by dry cleaning establishments, where even the most basic of human necessities are provided for a day late and with too much starch. Face it, the universe is no place to try and have a good time. Unless, that is, you're the proud owner of that wholly remarkable object, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Within the million-plus pages of the guide, 
which in many corners of the galaxy has already supplanted the Encyclopedia Galactica as the standard repository of all knowledge and wisdom, you'll find everything you need to know about the universe, from the utmost trivia to the most vital information pertaining to your health and well-being. We unconditionally guarantee it will teach you how to survive and even enjoy the universe, all on only 30 Altarian dollars per day. Oh, footnote. 30 Altarian dollars per day is an estimated figure and is provided strictly for purposes of comparison. Actual expenses may be higher. Another double footnote. In fact, we're sure of it. Quite frankly, if you're not absolutely prepared to lie, cheat, steal your food, pass rubber checks to unsuspecting hotel clerks, hoodwink customs officials, forge passports entitling you to diplomatic immunity, utilize bogus state student and or elderly identification cards to get yourself into tourist attractions at reduced rates, stiff everyone possible on tips and otherwise make a mockery of intergalactic law, just about the only way you're going to get by on 30 Altarian dollars per diem is by staying home and camping out in your own backyard. Meanwhile, just take a peek at this mere sample of the guide's millions of uses, and, like so many other satisfied customers, you'll be convinced that this is truly the most wholly remarkable item you'll ever buy. Planning a honeymoon? Let the guide show you how to get the best rates and accommodations on exclusive vacation paradises like Vortaqua, planet of the heart-shaped hot tub lakes. And there's a... Uh, Vortaqua. Trivia buff? The guide has all the answers, as well as the most questions. For example... What titles comprise Ulan Kulufid's trilogy of philosophical blockbusters? Answer, Where God Went Wrong, Some More of God's Greatest Mistakes, and Who Is This God Person Anyway? Convention coming up? The guide knows where to find all the swankiest hotels, the trendiest restaurants, the swingingest nightclub, the friendliest escort services, and the cheapest duty-free shops in which to buy gifts for appeasing one's family and conscience. Need help fast? In a flash, the guide can supply you with such useful tidbits of information as How to Tell Your Aunt Clara from a, southern, from a Seven-Stomached Gorbuk Plant, what to do if Aunt Clara has been devoured by a seven-stomach gorba plant, how to perform the Heimlich maneuver on a seven-stomach gorba plant, and much, much more. And another nice little drawing there. And that's not all. The guide is more than a super travel log or incredible answer machine. It's a lovely addition to any backpack or suitcase that fits in perfectly with every decor. It comes in a wrinkle-proof, scratch-resistant plastic cover with the look and feel of real vinyl, handsomely inscribed with the words Don't Panic in large, friendly letters. And talk about handy, the Mark IV version of the guide has more options than a 20-armed Hermogus has hangnails. Just look at what you can get. 73 function pocket calculator operation lets you solve equations that have baffled mathematicians for eons, such as how to travel faster than the speed of light without losing your luggage. Custom chronometer displays year, month, day, and date to within a fraction of a slube in civilian time and military time and happy hour time for the nearest pub in the galaxy. Trans a tanomatic reference table tells you the exact coordinates of all the best beaches, the most up-to-date fashion tips on polarized eyewear and reflectors, the precise length of time you can sunbathe before your friends have to carry you home in an urn, and the appropriate level of sunscreen to wear in case of a supernova. Serious cybernetics barometer, neo-Descartian or Descartian, neo-Descartian relative truth monitor indicates temperature, bar barometric pressure, high tide, low tide, wind direction, and velocity, prevailing weather conditions, amount of precipitation in the last 1,000 slubes, and whether you're actually experiencing any of it or simply being deceived by your imperfect senses. Salad slasher slash food processor slash lemon zester attachment slices, dices, chops, and bludgeons even the most rubbery fruit or vegetable in seconds. You have your easy press buttons, your 73 function pocket calculator optional, oh, sub, sub, uh, uh, footnote, all optional features subject to availability and our total unwillingness to turn a perfectly good product into some kind of glorified all-purpose appliance for every gizmo happy customer who happens to fall for this type of cheap smell, for this, for this type of cheap swank. You have your tanomatic reference table, your chronometer feature, your serious cyber next barometer, yeah, I'll basically show you where all things are. Actual size. Don't panic. But wait! There's more! Now, for a limited time, when you rush your Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy order to Megadodo Publications, you'll also get our special gift to you, enough throw-in items to fill an attic. So act now and receive all these fabulous bonuses, and the game actually comes with all these, and I actually still have them all, which I'll show you in a bit. Fluff goes anywhere, under the bed, behind the commode, at the bottom of your pocket, inside your navel. Destruct orders for your home and planet, suitable for framing and great gag gifts at any party. The Don't Panic button, perfect for those times when your planet is being bombarded by laser beams, your toaster starts talking to you, and traces of radioactivity are discovered in your breakfast cereal. 
Of course, nowadays, toasters might actually start talking to you. The Jew Janta 200 peril or super chromatic peril sensitive sunglasses. You'll look cool and stay cool, even when attending a Vogue on Poetry reading. Not recommended for driving. No tea, just like the tea professional hitchhikers don't carry. Microscopic space fleet, just the thing for attacking microscopic civilizations. Now, how much would you pay? How, how, how much would you pay now? One hundred Altarian dollars? Two hundred? Three hundred? Just fifty nine ninety nine. That's right. Rush your order and receive the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and the Fluff and the Destruct Orders and the Don't Panic Button and the Sunglasses and the Space Fleet and No Tea, all for the incredibly low low price of just fifty nine ninety nine. To save COD handling charges, Imperial Galactic Government Delivery Service duties, phone in your order today. Operators are standing by. Call one five 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 five. On Ursa Minor Bader, dial one five 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 extension five. Make that call today. This offer not available in any store except Deluxe Mat, Chainorama, Quang's Drive-In Asteroid, Tawdry Merchandise King, House of Remainders, Liquidators Clearinghouse, Mister Tawdry, Galaxy of Tawdry Merchandise, Tawdry Merchandise and such, One A Tawdry Sales and Service, Ye Old Tawdry Merchandise Shop, and Mega Mart outlets throughout the universe. But then, but then comes your instruction booklet, which talks about how you actually play the game. But yeah, I still have all these. These things that came with the game. The don't panic button I actually have elsewhere, so I don't actually have it in here. But here is the order for destruction for your house. Be it known on this date, fourth day in October, in the year of our Lord, 1982. That by decree of the Domicile Demolition Department of Cottingshire County, the residents of Arthur Dent at 155 Country Lane in the town of Cottington shall herewith be demolished, destroyed, and otherwise transformed into a nondescript heap of pulverized rubble. Said residents having evacuated said premises within 750 days of the issuance of this document, this order to be carried out and to be carried out regardless of acknowledgement by said residents of proper notification, said demolition being necessitated by reason of check one. National emergency? No. Health hazard? No. Complex technical matters? No. It's in the way. Yeah. Said property has been seized by right of eminent domain for future use as highway right of way. Other options are parking facilities, sewing mall, wildlife sanctuary, hunting grounds, new, new office aisles for the Dem most aisle, demolition department, vacant lot, and other. And then you have your little logo there. Demoliri domicilium. Something like that. I can't quite read that. It's a little, little small for me to read. We, the undersigned, do hereby authorize the execution of this order through the powers vested us by the state. God save the queen. And then you have the destruction orders for the planet Earth. Now the fun thing here is that these are not just random squiggles. You can actually read all this. Um... Unfortunately, you know, obviously this game came out in 1984, and so it's been a long time since I actually figured out this alphabet, but it is actually English, uh, just with different symbols for all the letters. Um, one of these days I should relearn what, what, that sa what this says, because I, I think there are some funny things in there. Well, I mean, this here is obviously, it's in the way. That's, it's, it's in the way. It, it all... But yeah, it was, it was completely readable. That was cool. So you have your peril sensitive sunglasses. Sunglasses that turn completely black at the slightest hint of peril so that, it, so that you don't have to be so concerned with anything that might possibly harm you. The microscopic space fleet. Uh, keep, out of, keep away from small dogs. If you know anything about Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, you get that joke. And of course, the fluff, still in its original wrapper. How many computer games come with stuff like this nowadays? How many computer games can you actually, you know, still buy these days? Pretty cool, funny stuff. And I thought people would like to see that. And now this video is extremely long. But, hey. It is not such a mind-bogglingly improbable coincidence that Douglas Adams, 
the, impress the irrepressible author of the best-selling novel Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, would design an interactive story set in the same outrageous universe as his books. He fell in love, well, strong-like, with Infocom's other interactive stories some time ago. He immediately saw the interactive possibilities of Hitchhikers and maniacally developed outrageously crazy ideas. So Douglas teamed up with Infocom specialist in outrageously crazy ideas, Steve Moretzky. Together, they did extensive research throughout the galaxy, in English pubs anyway. Douglas wrote and designed puzzles revolving around Vogue on Poetry, the Bug Butter Beast of Trawl, Microscopic Space Fleets, and of course, tea, or lack thereof. And Steve transformed Douglas's ideas into the high-quality, sophisticated software that is synonymous with Infocom's interactive fiction. And now you're going to take a trip you never thought possible. You are on the verge of becoming Arthur Dent, a simple, if unworldly chap whose house is unluckily being bulldozed to make way for a bypass. Not that it matters, really, since Earth is about to be destroyed for somewhat similar purposes. If you survive these twin disasters, you'll travel with Ford Prefect, your peculiar friend and neighbor, to the most unusual corners of the galaxy. Some of the corners are so unusual, in fact, that it's best not to assume the obvious, who you are, for instance. So prepare to have your mind boggled, your wits tested, and your concept of reality thrown for a loop by the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And don't forget your towel. There's a towel. Uh, those who are interested in playing this game, um, I haven't. I assume it's still available online to play for free, uh, with graphics now added. Um, Fan-made graphics, graphics that are made in, in the style of the television version of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, it was a kind of very iconic uh, graphic style. And uh, if I, when I post a video, I'll do a search for the for the online game. I post a link to it in the description. But uh, maybe I should read the rest of that demo. That that demo was was pretty was pretty funny. If we go back to that. I kind of was skipping through it because I wanted to show the rest of the stuff. Let's see. Where is the example? Here we are. Let's see. Yeah, you are Chester Smith, an unemployed granola salesman. What is the object of the game? You have, blah, blah, blah. The real object of the game is to show a bunch of novels how interactive fiction works. Walk north outside Blood Bank. You are in the middle of a block on a street that runs north-south. Immediately to the east is the entrance to a massive granite footnote 9 building. Next to the entrance is a sign and a doorbell. Footnote 9. Well, concrete, actually. We wanted a granite building for the story, but we couldn't afford it. Because constructing that giant spaceship for the Aldebaran battle scene took such a big bite out of the budget. But the concrete is covered with a plastic veneer that does look a lot like granite. Read the sign. Outskirts of London Blood Bank. We pay 30 pounds for a pint of blood. Painless. Takes only an hour. Ring doorbell for admittance. East. The blood bank door is closed. Open it. It's locked. Ring the doorbell. You already did that, didn't you? No. I think you're wrong. I'm a computer, so I have a really ter terrific memory, and I'm almost positive you already rang the doorbell. Couldn't you be mistaken? No. Hmm. Well, I just looked back, and I guess you didn't ring the doorbell after all. Do you still want to ring the doorbell? Yes. The doorbell... The, do the bell rings. A minute later, a stooped man opens the door and beckons you to enter. Get that on camera. Enter the blood bank. Waiting room. This is a dim room with exits to the east and west. A narrow, winding stair leads downward. The room is sparsely furnished with several uncomfortable-looking benches. There is no one waiting ahead of you. There is a bottle of smelling salts here. The stooped man slams the door for the front door and bolts it. Please have a seat. It will only be several minutes. He exits to the east. Sit down. What do you want to sit down on? The bench. You are now sitting on the bench. So this, this, this is actually how a game like this would work. Uh, you know, it, it would ask you what you want to do and what to do with so what you want to do it with if you don't if you're, if you're not specific enough in your instruction enjoy the bench easier said than done considering how hard and uncomfortable the bench is take the bottle of smelling salts you can't reach it from the bench stand up you're on you're on your own feet again take the bottle of smelling salts your load is too heavy inventory you have a briefcase a suit it looks like the suit contains a 10 pound note a grapefruit open the briefcase opening the briefcase reveals an array of granola samples drop the smelling salt uh, drop the grapefruit then take the bottle of smelling salts. Dropped. Taken. Wait. After all, what's the waiting room for? Time passes. The stooped man enters, pushing a wheelbarrow full of bones. You're no expert on the subject, but they sure don't look like chicken bones. He spills the bones down a winding stairway. West. The front door is closed. Open the door. Which door do you mean? The front door or the laboratory door? Front. It's bolted. Look. Waiting room. This is a dim room with exits to the east and west. A narrow winding stair leads downward. The room is sparsely furnished with several uncomfortable looking benches. There is no one waiting ahead of you. There is a grapefruit here. The stooped man is here pushing a wheelbarrow. Stooped man, open the front door. Who are you calling stooped? I've got the name, you know. Igor. Igor, open the front door. Igor chuckles. Don't be nervous. It's completely 
painless. There's nothing to worry about. Igor, what about the bones? Oh, they're just, uh, fake bones. We use for the anatomy class on Wednesdays. A gaunt man enter, emerges from the doorway to the east. Igor, bring in the next subject. He exits. Break down the street door. This results in a very sore shoulder. If you'll just step this way, says Igor, producing a cattle prod. Don't walk east. You bravely hold your guard. Igor pokes you with a cattle prod. You feel less brave. Walk east. There is an even dimmer room filled with... Or, laboratory. This is an even dimmer room filled with strange apparatus. A person-sized table fills the center of the room. The mad scientist is here, rubbing his hands. Igor enters behind you and locks the door. Don't panic. You try your best. You fail. The table. Please lie down on the table, says Igor, fondling the prod. Lie down on the table. You are now lying on the table. The mad scientist quickly shackles your wrists and ankles. Mad scientist, let me go. Who are you calling mad? They call me mad at Oxford also, but I'll show them. The mad scientist produces a hypodermic needle filled with a bubbling green fluid. He slowly inserts the needle into your arm. Everything begins. Everything becomes dark and fuzzy. Look, everything is dark and fuzzy. North, if you recall, you passed out a few moves ago. Diagnose, if you recall, you passed out a few moves ago. Look at me, everything is dark and fuzzy. Wait, time passes. The fuzziness clears and you find yourself in a strange new location. Look. West of a house. You are standing in an open field west of a white house with a boarded front door. There is a small mailbox here. Open the mailbox. Opening the small mailbox reveals a leaflet. Inventory. You have a briefcase. It looks like the briefcase contains an array of granola samples. A suit. It looks like the suit contains a 10 pound note. A bottle of smelling salts. Smell the smelling salts. It smells just like the lid of a bottle of smelling salts. Open the bottle. Opened. Smell the smelling salts. Again, this is how the game works. The smell is overpowering. Your surroundings blur and grow indistinct. Laboratory. Sitting on the table are some bones. Sitting on your workbench is a hypodermic needle, a book. Igor, remove the bones. Yes, master. Igor clears the table. There is another subject waiting outside. Igor, bring in the next subject. Yes, master. Who am I? You are Baron von Edelstein, the mad professor of Oxford. <laughs> Sounds pretty funny. Yes. Examine the hypodermic needle. It is filled with bubbling green fluid. Your identity transfer serum. Read the book. Taking the book first. The book is entitled Who's Who in Interactive Fiction Sample Transcripts. It will take hours and hours to read the whole thing. Perhaps you'd like to consult the book about a specific individual. Consult the book about me. The entry about Baron von Edelstein reads, A minor and poorly developed character in the Hitchhiker's Sample Transcript. Igor prods the subject into the room and onto the table. Inject the subject with the serum. You're not holding the hypodermic needle. Take the hypodermic needle. Taken. Inject the subject with the serum. The subject, whom you forgot to shackle to the table, pushes you away. In the ensuing struggle, you accidentally inject yourself with the serum. Lights whirl around your head, especially red, yellow, and green lights. The lights slow down and finally stop whirling, and you realize that your taxi is stopped at a traffic light. It's been an hour since your last fare. Suddenly, someone pulls open the door and slides into the back seat. Corner of Robington and Fuminster, please. Oh. <laughs> I think Douglas probably wrote that himself. So, pretty cool stuff. 1984. There's the pack. For your Apple II, Macintosh, Atari, Commodore 64, Deck Mate, Deck Rainbow, HP 150 and 110, IBM PC and PC Junior, K Pro 2, MS DOS 2.0, TI Professional, TI 99 4A, Tandy 2000, TRS 80 Color Computer, TRS 80 Model 3. Use the IBM PC version for your Compaq and the MS DOS 2 version for your Wang, Mindset, Data General System 10, Grid, and many others. And there's, they have like a little blush version of the Cosmic Cutie there, interestingly enough. So, there you go. 23 minutes of looking at this old game box. 